As coronavirus cases have continued to increase across the country, more and more states, including West Virginia, are mandating the use of masks in indoor spaces. We decided to tackle some of the myths and mistruths that we've seen across social media. We checked with Dr. Timothy Nurkowitz. He's the chair of the Department of Physiology and Pharmacology in the WVU School of Medicine. He also directs WVU's Center for Inhalation Toxicology. Face masks and coverings reduce my oxygen intake. No, they do not reduce oxygen intake. Uh, there is, in, in our atmosphere, the oxygen content is 21% uh, of our atmosphere. And there is essentially an infinite supply of oxygen around our bodies. And putting a mask in between your mouth and that supply is not going to interrupt it. What does happen is that the resistance to breathing changes and people do experience uh, disturbances in how easy it is to breathe whenever they have a mask on. They are not getting less oxygen. They're experiencing a different way of breathing. Face masks and coverings do nothing to protect me. Well, we should begin first with, with the definition of what the mask is. It is a barrier that protects the wearer uh, from things that are in the air, uh, from accidentally breathing them in, uh, as well as what is on our fingers when we touch our faces and our mouth and nose. Uh, it serves as a physical barrier, uh, as well as a barrier from all of the things that we exhale. It either blocks them or redirects them or decreases the force or the speed at which they're leaving our body. So the way that the, the mask works is that it is stopping these things uh, on the way in, or it's decreasing the amount that is coming in. Masks are unhealthy because we just breathe in what we just exhaled. So that notion it is partially true. There are things that we exhale uh, that the body does not need. It doesn't necessarily make it toxic, though. Uh, as a toxicologist, I can tell you that the basic tenet or definition of toxicology is that the dose is the poison. In other words, we could drink too much water and that would be toxic for us. So it takes a fair amount of something to change our health. So when we talk about or when we respond uh, to, to myths like this, People are usually referring to exhaled carbon monoxide, in which many people are familiar with folks that, that asphyxiate in garages with running cars and things of that nature. But exhaled carbon monoxide is, is nominal. Uh, the majority of, uh, or the closest thing that we're exhaling in, in that realm is carbon dioxide, uh, and nothing is sticking to the mask. In other words, these are gases that we exhale and the gases are freely diffusible. They go straight through the mask. There is nothing containing them. There is nothing holding on to them. Uh, they are free to move down concentration gradients, just like water moves from an area of higher elevation to lower elevation. Gases move from areas of high concentration to low concentration. Masks shut down the immune system when you wear them too long. That's also uh, inaccurate. Uh, there is no evidence that doing that shuts down the immune system uh, in the literature. Uh, it takes uh, quite a significant uh, exposure to shut down your immune system, as well as time. Uh, and, and neither of those are present with acutely wearing a, a face mask. COVID-19 particles are smaller than masks, so they're useless to stop the spread. That is in part true. A COVID fragment is approximately 150 nanometers in diameter, uh, but what is floating around in our air is the result of what we're exhaling. And those are droplets, so it's a fragment encased in a droplet of water, and that gets significantly larger. And significantly larger, I mean someplace in the range of five micrometers. The pores in a mask, uh, they're approximately, the, they vary from mask to mask, but they can be anywhere from 15 micrometers up to as big as 50 micrometers. And it seems like a COVID droplet would easily pass through that, 
but the fact of the matter is that the mask has three layers and the pores aren't lined up intentionally so particles or droplets that go through one pore will not get through the other pores and and they'll impact in the mask that's the movement of a droplet this is not the movement of a molecule of oxygen oxygen molecules are five to six orders of magnitude smaller than a, a viral fragment is um, and 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 we're at the picometer size and they go straight through things uh, as gases there's nothing that that hinders their movement if you look at what contains a gas we're talking about substances such as uh, steel or glass that is necessary to, to hold gases in not a, a, a fibrous surgical mask. Viral videos have shown face masks greatly reduce oxygen levels. The facts of this matter are that our atmosphere is 21% oxygen. As that value goes down, you have to go down to below 14% oxygen before you start seeing an impact on our blood oxygen saturation to get it below 95%. The body is designed to maintain homeostasis despite being in an ever-changing environment. So we have ways to deal with this. And so if someone, you know, you in the video, we, we saw the gentleman using the, the air meter and showing that exhaled air has 17% oxygen. Well, he, he's showing true physiology. He's kind of, you know, shooting fish in a barrel um, because if your oxygen isn't below 21% when you exhale, there's something very wrong with you. Uh, in other words, you're not using the oxygen that you're breathing in, so it should be less than 21%. The caveat that he isn't doing is he isn't measuring on an inhale. He was only measuring an exhaled breath. And so once you exhale, that oxygen that is lower relative to the rest of the oxygen around you the higher oxygen concentration diffuses into your mouth and that's what you inhale, thereby making sure that the lungs get the proper amount of oxygen. Equipment and videos have shown oxygen at low levels when used with masks. So uh, yes, we have seen uh, many videos of people on YouTube uh, using uh, various meters uh, to measure oxygen concentration that are used in the workplace uh, and these are legitimate tools uh, used by uh, uh, people in various uh, uh, workplaces. Um, however, the tools are not being used correctly in the videos. The tools are designed to measure oxygen concentration in a room, not next to your mouth. They're designed to measure oxygen concentration per unit time or to have a weighted average not an instantaneous reading and probably the biggest take-home message from these videos is the assumption is just because an alarm goes off in a video in a moment doesn't mean that it will continue to go off while you are respiring so in other words our breath as we breathe in and out it's about 500 mils of air milliliters of air move in and out of our lung during normal breathing if we believe these videos that uh, you know we're exhaling 17% oxygen and it never balances out and we breathe it back in, I would like to know where that's being trapped in the mask. Because the fact of the matter here is it's impossible for oxygen not to equilibrate in an open atmosphere. So the facts simply aren't there to support what they are proposing in their videos. The most important takeaway from this is to please wear a mask. You are going to do no harm at a minimum and everything beyond that is benefit to your health and to the people around you, your friends and loved ones, as well as curtailing the transmission of COVID. It will be some time before we have a vaccine and we have to work with the tools that we have now don't believe the videos that you're seeing online. Come to a legitimate source where you can get the facts correct and we will deliver them to you. And I hope that what you're hearing and seeing now will encourage you to wear a mask, 
practice proper hygiene, wash your hands frequently, keep your areas clean, and practice social distancing.